Kamala Harris's administration with Joe Biden crippled families across our entire country. There was a video of a, of a black woman being interviewed, I think by MSNBC, talking about how prices have gone up massively. A bell pepper that was $2 is now $5. And she was able to get through it, but what about a single mom with two kids, three kids doing everything to make ends meet? Well, the reason why those prices have been massively expensive is because Kamala Harris was the tie-breaking vote on Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan in 2021. She was the tie-breaking vote on the Inflation Reduction Act. All that did was create massive government spending, which created massive inflation on the backs of the American people. Overall, prices are up well over 20 percent, especially when you start getting into food and other areas like that. So Kamala Harris's record has been one of leaving working families behind. When Donald Trump was president, we didn't have a massive inflation. Our economy was growing massively at the same time. Working families were getting ahead. Middle income families getting ahead. Everybody was thriving. I think so the key issue is what was just brought up about which candidate is the candidate of political and economic change. It's without question that candidate's Donald J. Trump because Kamala Harris was sitting there shotgun with Joe Biden, creating one of the worst economic situations for working families in the last 40 years in the United States of America. True. Hey, Byron Donalds nails it. Thanks so much for joining us, Courageous Media. We got to check out Byron Donalds and Laura Ingram on the eve of Kamala Harris's dumpster fire economic plan. <laughs> this is just laughable. I did a whole live stream on this. Please check it out. You can look up the thumbnail. Straight up stupid. Straight up stupid is this economic plan. And so we're going to check out Laura Ingram as she walks through a couple of the salient points. Uh, but she has some good things to say. And then based on all of this and based on what's been happening the last couple of days, it looks like the honeymoon period might be over because this economic plan has forced even CNN to fact check and blast Kamala Harris for this abysmal idea these abysmal policy directions. So let's go. We'll jump in with Laura Ingram first, and then we'll check out where some of the shine might have worn off the good old Kamala campaign. Let's go. And before we get started, if you could please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave us a comment. What do you think of Kamala's economic plan? We'd love to hear from you. Ambit, that's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, the Biden-Harris administration, we all know, drove up inflation by just throwing the brakes on the energy industry and then borrowing and printing and spending trillions of dollars for climate boondoggles and handing out COVID cash. All of this was unnecessary and destructive, and all of it caused by the federal government under Biden and Harris. They were going to help us, right? And now, in a naked effort to buy votes, Kamala Harris is proposing more spending and more government intervention. While we work on the housing shortage, my administration will provide first-time home buyers with $25,000 to help with the down payment on a new home. Of course, this is a nightmarish idea, which will only result in higher housing costs exactly. as more people rush into the housing market, sugar high, created by printing or borrowing money. And yet somehow they expect a different result? Look, when it comes to the 25K, I mean, you just added $25,000 into every price in, in, in uh, every home price in the country. Because if you're giving that away essentially for free, people will add it into the price. And Today's speech didn't. 100%. It'll artificially inflate the price of every house by 25000 But the other part of her policy is that she's going to build 3 million homes with federal government, evidently money or loan guarantees or something, because she's not letting the market do it. So if you figure three million homes type it's a couple hundred grand a piece, but actually a lot more than that, because once the government gets involved, everything goes up like five to 10 X. So instead of 600 billion, we're probably looking at a couple trillion dollars worth of homes that she's going to somehow try to get built in a huge government money boondoggle giveaway. At the same time, she's going to give $25,000 to everybody to go buy a home, simply inflating the price of the home by $25,000. This is going to be an utter disaster. And it's going to result in even more inflation. So the price of the house is going to go up even more than $25,000. This is just ridiculous. It didn't sound like it was written by a winning campaign led by a confident candidate with a clear philosophy or even a coherent argument. And sorry, it was in no way reminiscent of Barack Obama. But it, it did remind me of this. 
Ah, Except at least Oprah paid for the stuff that she gave away or her sponsors did. But in this case, the regular working stiffs you and will I end up pay paying for through the nose. All due to Harris's manipulation of the housing market. And it's purely to squeeze votes from desperate people. So this economic speech, when you really listen to it, and if you didn't, I did, so don't worry about it. It's kind of a grab bag. A few of Trump's ideas thrown in, which is hilarious, some phony winks to deregulation, even to some lower taxes. No one believes that. But mostly, it seemed like it was cobbled together by left-wing think tanks and the squad. And let's face it, their ideas, like price controls, they've been batted around and rejected by sensible people for decades. As president, I will take on the high costs that matter most to most Americans, like the cost of food. I will go after the bad actors. And I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on pr price gauging on food. Price gauging. Okay. <laughs> Before Lamar it jumps in, there were two major salient uh, or two major capstone policies in her economic plan. The first was basically government, not complete takeover, but huge government meddling in the housing market by building 3 million homes, handing people a bunch of cash to go buy those homes, and essentially just torching the whole housing market. Because now there's government invention, it's going to be ugly. On the flip side, and even worse, is her proposal to not just stop price gouging like you and I think of it in terms of emergency situations. No, no. They want to take price gouging and extend it to every single day pricing and put that control in the hands of the FTC in a bureaucrat who's going to determine what Kroger charges for milk in Michigan and what independent grocer ABC charges for eggs in Texas and what somebody else charges for something else in Florida, somehow they're going to set the price around the country for every single food item. This is an absolute government takeover of the food industry, which will destroy it. And because it's food, it will destroy our economy. Check this out. Well, she gagged on the word gauge. She did or is that. it gouge? Who knows? Here, I'll back it up a little bit because she absolutely did. It's just disgusting. Ice gauging on food. Well, she gagged on the word gauge, or is it gouge? <laughs> Who knows? We're all gagging, Kamala. That's right. Now, I hope all of you enjoy waiting in line, because we have a preview of life under the policies that Kamala Harris announced today, or other price controls, of course, with special benefits that are doled out according to different groups that are designated as worthy by the government. В магазинах там вырезка, допустим, вот ее просто не было. Вот, соответственно, вот в этих вот распределителях, так называемых, там можно было купить то же мясо по государственной цене, но естественно лучшего качества. Oh, that takes me back. You'll get four things from price controls 100% of the time. You will get shortages because supply will go down. You and demand will go up. Supply will go down because manufacturers aren't going to maintain, aren't going to manufacture the good at the lower controlled price. And demand will automatically skyrocket because you've artificially lowered the price. That's going to lead to crap products. It's going to lead to crappy food, le even, even less quality food than we have now. And then finally, it's going to lead to a black market. You will get those four things. And because it's food, you're going to get huge lines, rationing, queues, shortages, all the above. It'll look like Soviet Russia. If that's what you want, it's help install this ridiculous candidate who has become the nominee without even a vote in the most undemocratic process ever. Thank you, DNC. And if controls on groceries work so well, and you see how well they work, I guess we should have them on gasoline too. For millions of Americans, this may be the worst weekend they've ever faced for finding gasoline to give them the automobile freedom they take as their due. For those of you who've been spared the experience so far, we want to share the emotions Americans are feeling on the gas lines. People are very desperate. They depend an awful lot upon their cars. I'm here since 5 in the morning. 
I spend every day three hours on the line. I am always nervous about gas. And speaking about a gas, no matter how they tried to dress up this economic speech today, one thing is clear. It told us that Kamala's honeymoon is likely out of gas. Absolutely 100%. This is the last point we're going to take. So we've delved into a little bit of Kamala's dumpster fire of an economic plan. If you want even more details, go check out my live stream. But the wheels have come off. The honeymoon period is over because even CNN was lambast Harris over this nonsense. CNN was laying into her over increasing the price of every house by 25000 CNN was laying into her on price controls and putting the FT... FTC in charge of pricing for food and what an abomination that would be. But I want to show you Kamala's, where Kamala gave this little speech. So this was Kamala's huge rally in Carolina where she gave this speech. There are more press people there than there are people there. Because guess what? There wasn't a free concert. Hey, Meg the Stallion, Beyonce, none of them showed up. So I guess nobody else showed up either. Check this out. So here is a side-by-side -side Kamala's rally. We just showed you the, the, the backup picture where you can see all the press. That's basically the entire audience right there, right behind her. 100 people, maybe. It goes, it harkens back to her days in her first rallies in Philadelphia and Minnesota when she barely put 68 people in a room. And then, then when the AstroTurf started, when the media started trying to pump up Kamala and pump up the excitement, and she started doing rallies in Vegas and Arizona with Meg Thee Stallion, Beyonce, with headliner major celebrities giving free concerts. And you saw those. We did videos on those, on those rallies where when the concert was over, people started streaming for the exit. They didn't want to listen to Kamala speak. They were there for the free, for the free concert. So it looks like Kamala can't do a free concert. It looks like you draw that many people. On the flip, on the other side, here's Trump. This was Trump Carolina rally. Same place. I just wanted to show you that because I want you to realize that the honeymoon period might be over and it's about high time it is because everybody needs to know who this candidate really is. This candidate who was the most unpopular vice president in the history of the United States, the worst vice president in the history of the United States, who was somehow installed by the globalist cabal of corruptocrats to be the Democratic nominee. They pulled a palace coup threatened Biden, blackmailed him with the 25th Amendment, and pushed him out of the race. They then endorsed Kamala and installed her without so much as one single primary vote. The people had no say in Kamala being the Democrat nominee, like it should have been. There was no primary to, ele to elect her to the nominee. Nope, none at all. She was installed by the globalist cabal of corruptocrats because she is their ultimate puppet. She is a straight-up disgusting communist. So far left, she selected a VP who is so far left, they're straight up tyrants. We've got videos of the police marching down the street in Minnesota during Waltz's draconian lockdowns, shooting people with paintball guns on their front porch. It's disgusting. These two candidates are disgusting. And thankfully, it looks like the honeymoon period might be over. CNN is finally fact-checking these fools. And you can tell by just how many people showed up at a rally without a free concert that there's not that much excitement. We got we to gotta keep putting the screws to them. We got to talk policy again and again and again. And we got to talk her record. We got to dredge her record back up because the press has memory hold two things so fast. It's made your head spin. The Kamala record... Her record as DA, AG, her record as Senator, her record as VP. And they've also memory hold the attempted assassination of President Trump. You don't hear anybody talk about that anymore. We got more stories on that and we'll join those tomorrow. Please smash that like button, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing in the comments. If you can support us, please do so as a partner. If not, please become part of our core team. We got to get out there and save our Republic, Courageous Army. So we got to donate. We got to volunteer. We got to drag 10 people with us to vote. Let's make this thing too big to rig. Please, on the flip side, what's even more important, we got to pray because God is in control and he is sovereign. And we got to pray that God has mercy on our country and gives us another chance to get this right. Because if we put Kamala in that White House, they will cement this weaponization of the DOJ. The answers from the assassination and January 6th will be so far buried, there will be nothing. 
And she will institute ridiculous economic policies like this that'll set America back to the Stone Age. We can't let that happen. We got to make it too big to rig. We got to pray because God is sovereign. He is good. I believe it'll all be good in the end. It's not yet good. It's not yet the end. Until I catch you next time.